Hi there, I'm Clarence Waldron. Welcome back to Black News. But before we get started with tonight's guest, I want to give a special thank you and acknowledgement out to Howard Sandifer and his wife, Darlene Sandifer. They are the founders of the Chicago West Community Music Center. And this whole video podcast, this whole have lively conversation, that's their idea. So with that in mind, I want to introduce you to tonight's guest, Mr. Otez Gary. He is the Community Engagement Manager at the Museum of Contemporary Art, Chicago. He's going to tell us all about the things at the museum that you should know about. So um, let me just stop and let him take, take it from here. Hey, Otez. Hey, how's it going, Clarence? All right, all right. So you are the Community Engagement Manager at the museum. What does that job entail? Oh uh, yeah, so it focuses on building community partnerships uh, with both uh, external partners and also internal partners as well. It also focuses on uh, public programming and also collaborative programming with other uh, organizers as well. And uh, I do also run a program called Soundtrack here, uh, which is based on uh, responding to the exhibits or works inside the museum uh, using Chicago up and coming uh, musicians and talent here as well. So uh, it's, a mix it's a mixture of a little bit of everything, but it, it really is a uh, it really is fruitful and full and filling work. So, right, right. So, what are some of the exhibits there now? Is it something that you're showing right now in particular? Uh, so, right now we have uh, the mirrors uh, that was done by our senior uh, curator here, uh, Miller James. We also have Martina Sims, She's Mad, season one. Uh, we do have the Calder exhibit open still. I'm trying to think what else is coming up. The big exhibits we have coming up uh, on November, November 19th, forecast form uh, be opening up. And that is uh, based on the Caribbean diaspora of the 1990s to now. So I'll look out for that November 19th as well. Whoa, okay, okay. Now I'm sure that you'll be focusing on diversity and inclusion in your, in your new position, is that correct? Correct, yeah, I, I really do look to make uh, this space in particular to be a safe and holistic and diverse uh, space for the community uh, because it is for the community. Uh, you know, institutions are in a transition of making uh, their spaces to be more equitable and more accessible for people to come in and to enjoy and be a part of. Uh, but you also have to do it through your programming and through your exhibits as well. And uh, I get to be very lucky to be in a position where I kind of get to pull people in the right places for those particular things. Cool. cool. Now, how long have you been there at the museum? Uh, this is going on my third year now. Okay. Okay. And your previous position was what? Because this uh, is a promotion. Yeah, yeah. correct. Uh, so I was a curatorial assistant uh, for performance and public practice uh, before uh, this position came up. So what does that involve? Uh, so with being a curatorial assistant, and I, I helped co-organize a lot of the pre-existing program that was here already. Uh, so our dialogue series that happens in the fall, uh, we have uh, programs like Soundtrack and Progress, and then also a Spring Seat, uh, Spring Suite and Performance series that happens every spring now, uh, was based on a, a different theme every year. So last year we had, uh, the theme was Entanglement, and I helped uh, organize, uh, Organize and produce a show, uh, a million dollar reflex. Uh, all the sex I ever had. It is a show that was based on six 65 and up Chicagoans coming to talk about their sex life. Uh, but it was more about that connection between uh, shared experiences that the audience can actually relate to. So it was a very interesting show uh, to be able to have six people from different walks of life be able to have open dialogue in such a way where uh, their stories were told. And people that was in the audience who had no idea um, what exactly to expect really could relate to a lot of these stories because some of them were really, uh, some of them got really deep. Uh, some of them were very uh, heartbreaking. Some of them was very joyous. Some of them was very happy. Uh, some of them was very, you know, comical, you know, shared shared laughter. And the, the it's probably one of my favorite uh, experiences here was, was putting, uh, 
helped me put it together that show it was really it was really great great experience for sure so is that something that we can see online is that on your website at all any snippets from this this program uh, it is uh it's not visible online per se uh it is i'll have to like shoot you a link to our vimeo after that and you can go check it out yourself it's really it is really really cool so hey, uh, yeah we had we did have this one uh, we had one of those performances recorded in the live stream, so I'll have to pull that and be able to send it to you. So I would love for you to check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you're a Detroit native. So yes, how sir. did the Detroit native end up in Chicago? Uh, you know, my dad moved to Rockford about 16 years ago, and I started to travel to Chicago a lot more back and forth to come see him. And I just kind of, I just fell in love with the city. And it just made sense at the time. I was like, you know, I want to, I want to come here for college. I, I'm, a, I'm an artist who wants to look to to build the, his brand more and um, rent out more. And Chicago was really was the perfect uh, kind of like homing spot uh, to be able to, to own in and uh, explore my talent. So, uh, yeah, Dad really kind of pushed it here, and then I was like, you know, why, why not? Why not just come here and, and see what happens? Right. 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 Now, you also have a degree in illustration and design from the Illinois Institute of Art. How has that helped you in your career, having that degree? Uh, so that's a tricky question. You know, okay. <laughs> uh, I will say it gave me enough tools, uh, like the basics and the necessities. Um, Man, that's that is a really hard question because I, I want to say that it helped, but it wasn't the it wasn't the launching pad, you know. Like I think a lot of people look at degrees as like what launches you, and for me, it's been my education outside of college that has really launched me into this position. So, it's 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 like a, it's a mixture. It gave me the basic necessities and tools I needed, but really the lived experiences and the education through experience is what really launched me uh, to the point where I'm at now. Okay. Got it, got it. So now go back again. Who or what inspired your interest in art? Oh man, you? I was, oh, I had to be five years old. Um, my cousin Maya was sitting there drawing and uh, they were playing the game Zelda, you know, old school Nintendo uh, game. And I just picked up the pencil and I decided to draw. And uh kind of figured out young that I actually had a knack and a talent for drawing. And uh, my parents uh, figured out I did as well. And so they kind of uh, pushed me to pursue more. Always bought didn't need the materials that I needed. And I got me into a lot of classes. Like in Detroit, there is um, uh, there is a college out there called CCS, a College of Creative Studies, uh, which is really prominent and, and really, uh, really high really high standing college as well in, in the country, but definitely in Michigan. And uh, got me into a lot of uh, the comic classes there because I, I wanted to be a, uh, a graphic novelist for a while. And uh, and those experiences really pushed me to keep going further. And, and I found I didn't really have a, a love for graphic noveling like I thought I would. Uh, but yeah, I definitely say five years old, just picking up a pen tool, playing Zelda with my cousin, <laughs> being babysat, and just like, oh yeah, you know, just trying yeah. it out. Right. I just figured I had a knack for it. It's interesting. All right. Now it's funny. This interview is going pretty fast. I'm surprised it's going so fast. But tell <laughs> us more about the museum. Give me just give us the address, the website, and all that kind of stuff. And how much is it to get in? Yeah, so the museum is located on 220 East Chicago Avenue. It's right downtown, right off of, of Michigan. And it is generally it is fifteen dollars uh, admission, but it's also pay what you can. Uh, so that fifteen dollars is like the suggested price, uh, but if you can't pay that, and you know, pay what you can, it's five dollars, a dollar, three dollars. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. On Tuesdays, uh, we do have free admission for our Illinois residents as well, uh, so it's always a good time on Tuesdays. It's probably the most uh, the the time where the museum is is filled the most at that at that point. So, so yeah. And uh, right now, and like I mentioned before earlier on, we're gearing up to open forecast form. Uh, 
on November 19th. Really exciting exhibit based on a Caribbean diaspora from the 1990s to now. Uh, so please come down and, and check it out and, and just see just see what all the, the fuss is about. The MCA is definitely doing good work, doing a lot of great programming too. Coming up as well, this next week, we do have, uh, on November 15th, we have the Elizabeth uh, Dialogue Keynote with Elizabeth Alexander on the Trayvon generation. So more than welcome to come check that out as well, too. It's really going to be, a, it's, it's a lot of good programming and exhibits coming up soon. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sensing the museum is a, a museum, but it also has a lot of programs, a lot of dialogue, yeah. which, you know, yeah. 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 Cool. No, it, it's 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 key. It's key to be able uh, to have those conversations based on the work. Uh, a, a lot of the times, if you're looking at the work and you know, people are just using the, the site test and like, oh, you know, I don't really understand it too much. Uh, but when you have that open dialogue and that conversation uh, with the folks who are doing it, uh, it gives that accessibility and visibility as well uh, to the process. And, and to openness and vulnerability for those artists to come and talk about uh, the works that they're doing. So uh, it really is, I, th I think dialogue and talks uh, are really key to a lot of the exhibits and programs that we have here, because it does give that chance to have that public facing uh, point of view uh, to be able to be a part of it as well. So really exciting. Cool, cool. So anything else on your mind you wanna share with us while, while we got you here? Yeah, I really, uh, I really appreciate being here, uh, Howard and Darlene, for inviting me, yourself, uh, conducting this interview. Uh, it really is exciting. Uh, I will tell you to be a, a young Black man here in Chicago, uh, to be able to be in front of other uh, Black men and women who I uh, adore and look up to. I've only known you for maybe less than 20, 30 minutes, but I can definitely tell that you have... Um, you have a presence to yourself. You have an energy that that Howard respects, and if Howard respects you, I know you're good people too. So, <laughs> and uh, so, so I really just appreciate being in front of other Black folks uh, who are doing the good work uh, because that really does inspire me to continue to do the work uh, that I'm push pursuing at this point right now. So. All right. Well, very good, very good. So, thank you. I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much, Clarence. Thanks for having me.